So being square is the most important thing. You can see how nice and tight that, once you get it like that, you can flip it over. Give it a little bit of a finish. And your first one's in. It's really important too when you do this, uh, when you go to the lumber yard, make sure you get the straightest two by fours possible. I know I say that a lot, but it is extremely important. If you have any curves, it's gonna, it's gonna really screw you up. So we're gonna go on to the next one. The next one, the next one, and uh, I'll get back with you when I'm done. All right, so what I'm gonna do is show you how close we are with this. These are the steps. This is a finished piece here. You can see we have just a touch of a gap there. There, it's very, uh, extremely accurate. Well, not perfectly accurate, but it'll be good enough for what we're doing. So again, I'll have all these measurements on the website. So all you have to do is do what I did and you don't have to do all the trial and error. Now, one of the things that I wanna show you once you have one of these built, and there'll be a design that you can lay it on to make sure that you're exactly correct. Once you have one built, all you have to do is take your next piece of wood, just clamp it down there, and you will just take your pieces and line them up and go, go, go all the way down. so that's what we got right there we have uh, five of these so we're gonna one in the center we're gonna put them every two feet and I'm, it's just nice curve and take these outside and get them going all right so here's what we have so far now you can just take a piece of plywood and cut it a lot of people do skateboard ramps that way and, and do these cuts on a jigsaw if you have the curve marked out I like this way better just a personal thing this took me about probably three hours of work so far to do now these are just regular two by fours right here and I'm just finishing them up and they're not strong at this point if you pick it up these will twist back and forth so I'm gonna show you how to strengthen them up too I went ahead and added a 2x4 to the end now and this is probably going to keep it from moving back and forth. One thing that I'm going to do and I strongly recommend that you do is just take some scrap wood what, or even a 2x4, cut it to a 45 there, 45 there and just attach it so that you make a brace down in here on this side on all four corners. This will absolutely prevent it from wobbling back and forth. Like let's say you have this for a mobile demonstration or something those will keep it from twisting which would absolutely destroy your project and make it look pretty stupid at the science fair or whatever the hell you're doing with this but this is really rugged right now so your brace will go right from here to here so what you do is you pre-drill these into an angle like that Put it into place. Make sure it's nice and e even. Give it a little push. And that brace right there will prevent this from twisting. So you do it on all four corners. So now you're going to set your uh, fence at 5 eighths of an inch. And that's going to give you that much space inside the blade and you're gonna make you're gonna rip a 2 by 4 to where you end up with a piece like this that is it actually comes out to be 5 8 just a touch more than a, a half an inch all right so that's what we got we've attached those 5 8 inch pieces of cut 2 by 4 it takes three more 2 by 4s to do this what you're gonna use here is one and an eighth fine drywall screws or one and a quarter fine drywall screws. You wanna use the fine because when you're drilling, uh, sometimes wood, these pieces were all soft. 
this was a hard piece of wood so it had a tendency to split so what you do is you just uh, if you get a piece that looks like it's gonna split you start your hole then you reverse your drill strip out the top one reverse it again uh, go back to the forward and drill in that way you just basically prevent that from stripping you can pre-drill all of these if you want but uh, there's 60 of them so it's gonna take forever to do but anyways that's what you should have so we're gonna go put our mirror on and see what kind of focal length we get one thing you want to do when you pull this adhesive off this uh, clear protective coating that they have on these don't try to take the whole sheet off in one one thing because you could stress the mirror where the screws are and actually crack it so it's a good idea to just tear sections of it off now when you put the when you drill the acrylic keep in mind that I um, I put one screw there we're gonna have to put them in a few points here to hold them down so what we want to do we don't want that we want this pressed firmly down all points and uh, so there's a few screws that you can use these are regular drywall screws but if you notice the top top of them is tapered and that's bad because as I if you try to flush it up you'll sh just split your acrylic right apart so you want to get uh, screws that have a flat top to them put like a soft rubber washer there and uh, that's the proper way to do it I'm just putting these for temporariness for position only your drill bit when you drill a hole in acrylic you don't want to go full force you want to go as slow as you possibly can and I'm gonna show you with this hopefully this doesn't break on me because I'm only using one hand you get it started and you don't put any pressure you just let it build up a lot of heat and And you can actually reverse your drill and go the other direction and this melts through the plastic versus um, actually cutting through it. And I'm going to reverse it again. The reason that you don't want to drill like you do wood is because once that blade grabs and pulls, it'll actually split the acrylic. So when you start to see a little wood material come out, make sure that this hole is cleared out too because the plastic, once it uh, solidifies again after being melted, so now you just put your uh, good screw right down in there. There you have a giant trough mirror. Now I have, you can see that I haven't fastened all these down in their proper places. And you can actually put an adhesive. It's better to use an adhesive if you can get it to take, put that mirror down versus putting holes in it. Cause if you crack this big piece of mirror, you're pretty much screwed. It'll just run the whole length of the mirror and that's not a good thing. So, you can put an adhesive in there. I did the screws so I could get this project out of the way and show you. We're going to take a look at what the focal length looks like. I got it at a rough angle. The sun's probably at a tighter angle. I'm going to be able to adjust this for the time of year that way. You can see where those beams converge. You'd want your pipe to be a little bit closer. You want as much of the light to be on your pipe as possible. Now this is a long 8 foot linear beam. So if you run a 10 foot black piece of pipe across here, this isn't going to necessarily catch stuff on fire. It'll get it really, really hot. And the goal is to jump water temperature up to about 250 degrees with one of these because you're concentrating all that sunlight. Yeah, all the stuff on the website eventually. Um, directions, that sort of thing. I'm your host Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.